dude. So what do you guys think? If we don't got the right justice, what's justice actually look like? What is justice gonna actually look like on this, on this thing? Man, I swear, because you, you can't, now, the way that I've, you know, used this channel, searching for things, man, it is impossible to go on YouTube and not be exposed to the filth out here. <laughs> oh. oh, man. It's bad. It's really bad. Like, oh, man. It's so bad. Um, like now, legitimately, if I go live and I and you know I don't hit the do not disturb, oh man, they cut my whole live all shredded to pieces. Oh, they're good. Uh, but then when I hit the, the do not disturb, oh um, I got get the weirdest shit. Like I get group text from like five different numbers and none of them exist, and it's like, oh for what? You know what I mean? Like, that's people don't have shit to do. Like, man, I got kids. <laughs> I got bills, right? I don't know what the hell you got going on. You got time to do all that shit. You ain't got enough going on. I'll tell you what. But yeah, I mean, what is what is what does justice look like? What, what do we have to have see, you know, to get a, a sufficient amount of justice, right? Somebody got, somebody's got to get hurt. I think that's what everybody wants. Everybody wants to see Monica and Cameron get hurt, don't they? That'll be enough then, I think, won't it? Right? Well, everyone will feel suffice then if somebody gets hurt another person gets hurt but you know quite naturally the only thing that will you know make it just as good as it could be is if uh you know of course if a victim got hurt right i mean specifically monica and cameron like they people want to see them to get hurt you know and uh i i can't for the life of me understand it justice gotta look like what the fuck does justice gotta look like I don't know I don't know I think clearly the large channels they want Darian Brown out of jail it doesn't matter any of the other any of the, any of the charges he has right now uh, you know in, injury to uh, an elderly or a child with the intent to commit another felony uh, you know like Let's just forget about all that, right? Let's just go back to zero for Brown. Like, you know, like, as long as we've, we've you know, uh, alerted the online community to the idea that that's not Darian Brown, that just can't be Darian Brown, right? Like, there's just no way that could be him, right? He doesn't even, like, he has a whole past that supports, <laughs> uh, I mean, just, Take away the video. Brown has a whole past that supports him being a, a an abductor of children. Um, you know, and, and then it's like the perfect storm, right? Like then you see Brown's attorney, right? Heath Harris. He's linked with um, Brown for you know a clout chase scenario i'm assuming i mean that's that's what it looks like right like 
Keith Harris got involved in some jazz here back in 2016 where, um, you know, the Craig Watkins, the DA, got jammed up taking a bribe from, from a pedophile who didn't, who didn't want to register it, a dope dealing pedophile. So, um, you know, Watkins gets jammed up taking a 50K. Fucking Harris, who is Darian's, Darian Brown's attorney, the case for the bribery comes across his desk and he signs it off. Yeah. He's like, oh, there goes the text. <laughs> One, two, yeah, they're really stepping it up. <laughs> oh, boy. You motherfuckers, you. <laughs> Anyways, Heath Harris, man, it could be Heath Harris. Heath Harris, you know, he was he was running, right? And um, so Heath Harris's ethics and morals are already in the play, right? Before he steps on this case, um, and this is just what he's been good for, been made good for publicly. Right, we don't know about the things Harris did that he didn't get caught for. Right, um, I'm sure I could find out though. <laughs> um, but you know, if it comes to that, it comes to that. But <clears throat> um, boy, it's a perfect storm. You've got uh, you've got a baby killer um, who clearly, to me, operates um, under a, a modus operandi motivated by sex um, and then here you have um, you know essentially what Heath Harris did was he wanted to get rid of any trace that his good buddy Craig Watkins the lead DA the elected DA right that this history of him sympathizing with a dope dealing pedophile who doesn't want to fucking, he doesn't want to register, right? So instead of making it harder for the pedophile to get out of jail, he made it easier or tried to make it easier. It's the same thing he's doing for Darian Brown. He just does it for a different office now, right? He was keeping bad guys. He was keeping bad guys. Out, oh shit. He was keeping bad guys out of jail back then, but on the wrong, from the wrong side of the fence. He was keeping pedophiles out that weren't registering, lifelong register. Um, then when his buddy got jammed up, he wanted to keep the, the DA who sympathizes and takes bribes from pedophiles, wanted to keep him out of jail, thus eliminating any case of bribery between said pedophile and said DA. <laughs> Man, fuck you, me. Boy, please. He terrorists got life in the game fucked up my boy you got life in the game fucked up mr make it go away you're not making this shit go away you're not making none of this shit go away Heath. i promise you he uh, they're gonna get that boy the medicine a long stroke of the medicine too <laughs> you know that but you think that because you can, you're gonna try to you're gonna try to make a case for competency, right? Against competency, you're gonna make a case that that this boy is, you know, schizophrenic or whatever the fuck shit you say. Boy, going to pick up a prescription. Yeah, what does the justice look like? What's more justice look like? Uh, you ask Molly Ho lightly, and uh, that Aryan Brother Aryan Brotherhood channel AB. You ask them to um, shoot, cut Darian loose. That's what they want. They want they they want they want the FBI in Dallas County to cut Darian Brown loose and lock up Monica and uh, Cameron, right? They actually want to cut Darian loose so he can go right back and finish what he had started. That's what they want, right? If you're making a case against Cameron, 
when the police already got the right dumb motherfucker in jail, if you're making a case against the police that Cameron's the guy, first of all, everything between both of your ears is shit. It's fucking mush. Right? Second, what you have on board is you have on board some sort of um, I don't know what it is. It's an issue. Um, I would almost say, yeah, I can't fit in there, bub. I would almost say um, that you're a vigilante against justice. If that's what you're trying to do. I don't know. If your comments are out of pocket, maybe so. Probably so. I'm driving. I don't know, sir. I just happened to catch that comment. Brown, yeah. Shit. Boy, if you don't get your healthy looking ass a job. Anyways. What does more justice look like? Yeah, more justice looks like Darian Brown out of jail. I mean, let's just go ahead. Let's just go ahead and lock up the wrong fucking guy right now. Let's just do it. Fuck it. Let's get it out of the way. Like, like, let's hurry up and lock Cameron up. Good God. Can we can we start a petition or something? Like, let's just get him locked up and just satisfy everyone, please. Like, oh God. Forget it, right? Like, <laughs> forget it. Anything ever bad happened to you and your family? Fuck it, man. Let's rejoice. Let's tell the law they're wrong, right? fuck is wrong with you people, man? Redbird is, yeah, Redbird is all down. It's down camp wisdom. Redbird is the, the start of the hood. Redbird. But that, it used to be Redbird Mall. Now it's called Southwest Shopping Center. But... Darian Brown, I'll tell you what, Darian Brown go down there to uh, Redbird, which is down the street from, you know, Camp Wisdom runs right up to the woods. So if he were to go jump out on Camp Wisdom from over there by his house, he goes straight down Camp Wisdom, right past Cockrell Hill into Redbird and get his ass ate up. Darian Brown ain't shit in Redbird. There's some real motherfucking killers in Redbird. Darian Brown is a play toy compared to them boys in Redbird. Them boys in Redbird eat his ass up. Put him underneath a piece of concrete somewhere right by his house. I mean, I don't, the boys in Redbird don't play. Um, you are, Darian Brown ain't shit compared to them gangbangers in, in, uh, off of Redbird. This can't wisdom. Um, yeah, so, I mean, it, for real, Darian Brown may have been a fucking menace vandal over there in his neighborhood, but, but off of Camp Wisdom, Darian Brown ain't shit. He'd have got his ass tore up. That's why he stayed over there doing that dumb shit. For real, he stayed over there doing that dumb shit. Because the real hitters over there by Redbird fuck his ass off. That's what they would do. For real. So, I just wonder, what would it look like what would it look like if we gave all these YouTubers their wish? If we gave all these YouTubers their wish and cut Darian Brown loose and put Cameron and Monica in there? Hey, I mean, two's better than one, right? Two is better than one. I mean, it's definitely more people, right? I mean, it, it, it would, you know, by, by sheer numbers, it would be more justice, right? Yeah, I know, sweet one. You won't, you can't get nobody to believe none of this shit. He was, Grand Theft Auto, I've been saying this since day one. He got the ELM for a Grand Theft Auto in a felony evasion of the police. That's what he got it for. These people are like, no, he's got to hold for it. Now, if he gets a bond, man, 
You got life in the game fucked up too. Fuck you mean. Out here messing up on good folks money. Saying, sh- fixing your face to say shit like that. Fuck is wrong with you. Got me all the way messed up. So yeah. What's, what's more? More. Two for one, right? Two for one? Good. Yeah, two for one, right? Let's throw Brown out, out there. Put him back on the street. Can I help you? Uh, I need to pick up a prescription for Lindsay. Okay, that's the last name? Yeah. Yes. What's the date of birth? 3-15-79. All right, thank you, sir. You take care. You too now. All right. God bless. They're not going to talk about that neither. Let me tell you why they're not going to talk about that. Because his daddy is the police. Y'all have a good day. His daddy is the police. Shit. <laughs> Man. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, see, right down the street from Redbird, you got Big T. Big T Bazaar. That's over by Highland Hills, Singing Hills. What happened now? Jeffrey. Yeah, I might do some, um, I might do a call in live tonight. I sure will. How is, uh, what time is it? It's four. It's four o'clock right now in Dallas. So four hours from now. Let's shoot for eight or 8.30. We'll do a call in, okay? We'll do a call in. Uh, um, how do you suggest? Now, whoa, 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 Doug did what? Doug did what? Jeffrey, what what did Doug do? Oh, you donated some money to the cause? You donated some money for Monica, didn't you? Are you kidding me? You sent $150 to me to donate for Monica and he took it. Jeffrey, my email is altitude, A-L-T-I-T-U-D-E-F-I-L-M-Z, altitudefilms at gmail.com. Um, can you show me a receipt of that? Because if you have a receipt of that, um, we'll go. F- I can I can help you go forward with that. That's some bullshit, dude. Yeah, I'm sorry to hear that. Doesn't surprise me though. Um, you know that was the deal from day one. Me going live on his channel, bringing you know the resources I, I've I had attain, obtained to his channel that was always the deal oh we're gonna split everything that from the lives you're on man we didn't do none of that shit i never asked for about none of it but um 150 bucks that's some bullshit you're in bakersfield well let me tell you what jeffrey i felt i feel it now i feel it now in spirit brother i feel it now in spirit and um we'll oh man I'm sorry, dude. You know, that's been kind of a history, you know. Um, Got involved with 
a beautiful lady out of California named Left Undone. And we were given a preview of a video of hers just to look at. And this guy, he puts out a preview or makes a preview and tells everyone that this lady's going to release this video at 8 o'clock p.m. or whatever. Well, she got tied up with work, right? This dude fucks around and just posts the video, right? It's just, a, it's that comp thing, right? It's just all the time taking shit that ain't his, right? Dude, I am fucking, I'm sorry, bro. I'm really sorry, bro. Golly, man. That's some really scumbaggy shit, dude. But let me tell you what. Thank you, Leandra. Let me tell you what, Jeffrey. Your heart was still in the right place. Yeah, well, so... Man, fuck it. I'm just going to donate this video to the cause because he reports every single video I make. And then I got to go through this process to try to remonetize it. And it's just getting, it's getting insane. You sent 20. There, the, yes, you, woo, yes, you did. Yes. So I was working a deal and Doug was my best friend. So I'm like, man, Doug. You know, I told him like he'd been my best friend for like six, seven months. Yeah, he needs to give that money back. But let me tell you what, anyway, six, seven months, we're best friends. Come on to this case. I, I'm helping him with all the stuff on the West case as far as like, oh, as far as, far as like, you know, resources and, and you know, OC and all that other stuff. And, we get the Gurnan case pop off here in Dallas. And I go and and I'm in, you know, I meet with the family and, you know, do the balloon release and, and create some resource for them. And you know, and, and meanwhile Doug starts asking me for all of the materials that Monica's sending to me. Right? And he's like, I, I need them. And I'm like, dude, what are you, hold on, bro. And then there was a time where um, he called me and he was clearly intoxicated and he was doing a bunch of slurring of the words. And then all of a sudden he puts on this, like he puts on his, his fucking, you know, he puts on his fucking interviewer voice. And I'm like, dude, what are you interviewing me right now for? Like, this is some bullshit. Um, so then he went live and he put out a lot of information that was not true. And while he was live or right after he went live, like I, I text him, I called him. I was like, bro, you're not shit. Fuck you, dude. And uh, he was like, dude, no, 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 let's talk. And I'm like, bro, listen, you know, the next day he says, well, look, dude, I made a, oh, so let me, let me step back the whole night before he's like, bro, we got to expose her. We got to do all this. And I'm like, expose what dude, there's nothing to expose. He just want to expose all of the inside fucking text and emails between Trevor and Monica, which doesn't have anything to do with any of this. Nothing. I have them all. And I haven't, I'm not going to produce any of them for online because it pertains to none of it, right? So Doug's like, dude, da -da 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 -da, and I'm like, bro, Doug, like, I'm not going to do that, Doug. He asked me 10, 15 different ways to do this. And I'm like, listen, Doug, doing this shit with these people down here, he paying for you. <laughs> Yeah, he paid for the pizza. <laughs> uh, so, damn, back on point. He's like, bro, we gotta, we gotta put all this shit out there. And I'm like, Doug, dude, that was when I realized that I'd prefer to be in the um, victim advocacy genre of YouTube instead of being what what they refer to themselves seriously, with all seriousness. 
they re refer to themselves as instigative reporters. Um, it creates clicks, it creates views, it creates places for ads to run. Um, and it's all, a, you know, I mean, when, when they're not getting the cash apps and the, in the, in the super chats and shit, then they go really extra hard with the salacious, salacious shit. So as it creates extra clicks that will essentially make up for the money that they don't get in the cash app or the super chats anymore, right? It's like, you got to create salacious material um, so that, you know, when the super chats fall off or when people like Jeffrey send $150 to me, because I'm always on Big Heads Live, they send it to me. <laughs> Look what you get. Guess what, Jeffrey? Your heart was in the right place. Let me tell you what. I guess you got to look at it like God God made that situation what it was going to be, right? He gave it to the person. If somebody had to steal it from you and me, he needed it worse, right? He needed it worse. That's right. So you did a great thing. That's all you can do. You know, I mean, it's, I, you know, fuck that dude, man. Whatever he's got to say, whatever he's got to put online, I don't give a shit what he does. Like, man, I, you know, no love gain, no none lost, man. Like I, what you know, what it did was it just, it just uh, concreted the fact that having these, you know, trying to have real mature adult relationships with people on YouTube is fucking stupid because they're gonna fuck you over as soon as they can, or as soon as you don't do something that fits their agenda, or or you you do do something that doesn't fit their agenda, and they're gonna fuck you off. And guess what? In this true crime community, threats to the people online, the creators, is a real thing. Except for now, I get threats from people in Dallas, or seemingly in Dallas, in real life. Every time I come online, I get barraged, barraged by this fuck shit, right? Well, guess what, man? I know who it is, and I know who it isn't. And dude, like, grow the fuck up bro grow the fuck up your mo is always taking shit from people that ain't yours dude stop that shit you're just a fucking consumer what do you give back what can you give back fucking hey jeffrey you're a real motherfucking man bro and I'm sorry you got you got taken advantage of, bro. Right? Now, guess what the other channel would do if I was the one that had taken the money? He'd say, oh, dude, that sucks, man, but here's my cash app. <laughs> uh, why don't you send the money to the right person now? Like, bro, I'm sorry that happened to you, bro, and I'll do my best. Um, if you have a receipt, go ahead and email me the receipt, and we'll do a video about it, bro. Right? We'll do a video about it. Fuck it, man. You know, I'm sick of the shit. I'm sick of these sorry motherfuckers on here stealing and doing all this stupid shit so they could be fucking, so they could be somebody online. Man, I want to be somebody in real fucking life. Fuck that online shit. I am somebody in real life. Right? I'm somebody. I put my face on here, shit. I deal with the threats that come in. I don't, I, man, there's people out here, I hide their fucking face. You'll never see their face. Not online, you won't. And then as soon as you find out who they are, you put their name online, oh boy, they wanna strike your page. They wanna strike your channel down and shit, you know? Man, I can't even play, I can't even play this pussy ass game, right? I'm a real man, right? I got kids that I pay for. <laughs> I'm not out here trying to figure out how to how to move this YouTube money around six times before the fucking before the people catch it. Man, you got me fucked up. I make sure my kids get theirs. I don't know, man. 
150 bucks. Like, I hope that that wasn't a lot of money to you, Jeffrey. But I think at this point in, in life and time, it is a lot of money, right? And for for somebody to do that, bro, is the lowest of low. That is the quintessential pain chaser right there. Not only did you get yourself into a realm, did he get himself into a realm where somebody thought that sending money that way was going to be the best way. And then he's not even man enough to forward the money over. Well, you guys, you can all see it now. I'll see it. That's why I don't like involving the money with the YouTube. There's a few people out there from the very beginning when uh, some of the very first moderators, you know, when I was green, uh, had, you know, had the, the cash app and would put it out there. And, you know, like I have a few people that are true donators and they, they know when they donate. It's sometimes or always a different cause, right? Like I don't, I don't try to get this money off of YouTube so I can live my regular life with it. That's not what this YouTube money doesn't do that, right? And it's people out there that don't have jobs. They've got lots of kids. They got a supporter. Maybe they got two kids or one kid or five or ten. I don't know. But they try to support them by this everyday you know, YouTube shit. Man, this YouTube shit for me is awareness, right? I don't make no money after I spend all the time trying to re-monetize the channels after one of these dickheads tries to report. You know, they just go in there and say, oh, it's, it's, it's you know, terrorist. Uh, it promotes terrorism or it's, you know, whatever. And then you got to go through this crazy process in order to, you know, re-monetize. And I just don't even do it. <laughs> Right? So I don't make no money on my YouTube. I just don't make no money on my YouTube. Like that's, it's not for that, right? I guess, I mean, I tried just like everybody else. I tried to be one of the people that justified being paid from YouTube because I, I, I'm an advocate. I'm advocating, right? Um, and that the money that, that I accrue from online, um, you know, I'm, I'm helping someone with that money. I'm helping many people with that money um, in that family. So. I don't even know, like, you know, shit, man, what's left, what's left, right, it's, uh, more is good, right, I mean, we live in the land of the supersize, right, I mean, fuck, every two years, or, or now, I think it's every year, car manufacturers, they don't just make the cup holders, the same every year. They have to get with the fucking with the with the fucking fast food companies and make sure that the cups for this next year, the next big size, is gonna fit in the car this year, right? Because it's it's getting bigger every. That's that's America, right? Big guns. You like big guns, big stakes, you know, big cars, big boats, big houses. You know, look at the rest of the fucking world. Look at the UK. Look at China. Right? A big house in China is um, a large living room in America, right? Well, I'm not making fun of them. What I'm telling you is, is the way that, that fucking Americans are shrouded in more. Everything's got to be more, more, more. It's got to be bigger. It's got to be more entertaining. Um, you know, we've got N NBA. We've got NHL. We've got MLB. We've got, you know, NFL. We've got all... We've got all the diff. I mean, we've got all the fucking attractions that you can have, right? We also have this phenomenon in America where guys like Richard Ramirez, um, you know, the Night Stalker, where it couldn't get a woman in real life, but as soon as he's charged and he's sensationalized by the media, now he's got a rock star, um, you know, sex following, right? What we all need is Jesus, man, I'm trying to tell you. I'm trying to tell you. Man, I'm just... I'm just... Uh, 
I'm tired of the manipulation. I'm tired of, you know, my wife knows I, I'm, I'm in an impossible situation, just like Monica, just like Trezell and Jacqueline. It doesn't matter what I say or how I say it or whom I say it to. Um, the whole world is trying to attack it and, you know, break it down. And um, Hey, beautiful Cherry. I'm just really off put right now by the $150. Um, it's not about the money at all. What it is about is the principle. It's like, wow. And how I know you're telling the truth because that's just what, it's what happens, right? It's the MO. I'm really off put by that because, um, man, I'm sorry, dude. Ashley Ortiz. Hola, mamacita. Thank you for becoming a member. I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't know. It's so... Um, any victims, Cannabis Queen. Any victims. Right? Any victims. I don't know. I guess I, guess I was the the subject of the live last night and um, I guess they were saying I was a pedophile and a child molester and um, you know there's only so many ways they can attack your character online um, you're right I do need to stop wearing my heart so do you cherry <laughs> us good people if we're gonna stay online we gotta become fucking monsters and cherry that's not what we want to do is it we don't want to be monsters. I don't want to have to be a monster in order to have a voice um, and in order to give other people a voice. Why do I got to deal with, you know, I got to deal with all of it, right? Why? Why? It's like, you know what? It's like the way these people are online, guess what these people would do? They'll see a little old lady on the side of the road with a flat tire. And they must say, fuck that old bitch. Right? She's the victim of a flat tire. Fuck her. Fuck all victims. And, and, and in fact, when you when I see a victim, I just want to fucking, I just want to just demoralize and just fucking, you know, just to break their life. When I see a victim, I get horny. That's what these people do. That's who they are. Right? They see a victim and they see a come up. That's what it is. These people see a victim. They see, they only cover victims of real trauma and real crime, right? So, yeah, we want Sherrod blood, right? Silence is deafening. Yep. Yeah. That's the thing, you know. It, it clicked a couple of weeks ago. I stopped um I stopped uh engaging. I stopped engaging um the people on the big channels doing all the shit talking. And because I stopped engaging them. Now they're twisted up out of control. They don't know how to handle it. Oh my God, Benny won't engage us. We've got such big channels. We've got huge channels compared to him. Look at our subs. They, I, I get hit with that every day. They got 10 times more subs than you. Yeah, well, why don't they get 10 times more views and more awareness? I, I don't know. <laughs> uh, I, I engage 100% of my audience every time. 100% of my audience, sometimes more than 100%. These people, they play around with about 10% or 20% of an audience. And that's what they call it as an audience. Like you, you people aren't audiences. You people are fucking team members to me. Cause guess what? If I didn't have you folks to talk to, like right now, I'm not even talking to nobody. I'm just talking crazy. <sighs> but if I didn't have y'all to do that, man, I wouldn't be able to do none of this shit. Oh, cannabis. Oh, I'm sorry, honey. Uh, ours is doing really good. He's growing fast. 
Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Because you know what? We love our dragon. Everybody, he's, you know, it's mommy's boy, daddy's boy. My son, Luca, calls him his, his dragon brother. Oh, I'm so hard. You know what? They're just perfect little creatures. And so, I, you know, you already know what you got to do. Go get you another one. Go get you another one. You know? Go get you another one and fill that hole in your life. And you'll have that that little reptile, you know, child that loves you. And, you know, go get you another one. Oh, I bet they are. Uh, I mean, if something happened to our dragon, our house would be, uh, you know, and our dragon's only... What is he, two months old now? But we spend a lot of time with him. His mom spends a lot of time making sure he has a very diverse diet. Um, <laughs> exotic fruits, the best greens, uh, Madagascar, cockroaches. Um, I mean, just everything. So, anyways, guys. Um, oh, I got to go get the boy. I can talk for a few more minutes. I got to go get the rug rat. I forgot all about him. Uh, yeah, so guys, um, and spread the love, man. You know what? Instead of attracting all these dirty ass flies with all this bullshit, you could be attracting butterflies just like me. I attract butterflies, I don't attract blowflies, <laughs> right? I attract butterflies. Even the men that come around, they're, they're uh, majestic, majestic butterflies. I'd rather be a, bu a butterfly than a shit-covered housefly any day. Uh, we don't even eat the same. We don't. We are not the same, right? Um, so, yeah, guys. I'm just, I'm sad about it, you know? And, and really what it does is it... It kind of, it influences the, like a creator like me. It in, seeing all this stuff, it influences me in such a bad way, um, and and what and, and it, I'm exposed to this shit in such a bad way that when I'm driving in my car, I just can't help but think that like the, you know the people in the car next to me or the people at the grocery store, if, if they don't you know initially just have a smile on their face, well then they may be, they must be one of those people that is vicious online and. Uh, and I hate to think that the world is surrounded by all these YouTubers in real life, like us good people in life. We have to watch out for those people that are like those, you know, the people that take money from people online and, um, you know, slander people's lives and um, vandalize their property and cite violence. Um, you know, say that they... That they, you know, these people in one breath will say, oh, we advocate for kids. We're here advocating for kids. But at the same time, inside a situation where somebody goes and throws a fucking stone at the front of that house. Had to happen to the kids. Be both in the same body. Now, that's the sad part is that these people on YouTube think that you can be both people. They think that they can be the, the. They think they can be God to everyone, right? Because you were featured on a um, wife swap, like you know that makes you the authority, right? Um, you know because you made Xanax addiction look sexy online, that makes you the. That makes you the guy, huh? All right. Yeah, it's funny how it's funny how. Uh, sloppy go lightly funny how she says or how she hooks up with uh, AB you know you got a the Xanax queen and the fucking pot dealer <laughs> uh, right <laughs> man you got me messed up out here how can you be a child advocate I, you know, it's one thing if you want to use marijuana for, for pain. I use marijuana for pain, but I certainly don't sell it. <laughs> I don't cultivate it. I don't do any of that good shit, right? I stay within the intent of the law, right? So if if uh, methamphetamines, um, you know, if someone out of Portland, Oregon, or somewhere where methamphetamines is decriminalized, uh, they want to come on here and say, you know, 
it's okay to team up with one of these other fucking channels that does the salacious shit there too because oh it's it's it's, uh it's not illegal here yeah it's morally illegal (laughs) come on it's morally illegal anyways i've got to step out of the car and go get junior thank you guys i love all of you um i'm not going to cut off the video I'm, I'm going to put him in the back. So if you want to hang around until he gets in the car, um, that's on you. Otherwise, I love you. Um, and we are going to do a call in. Guys, remember, around 8, 830, we'll do a call in. You guys, um, I've got to set up a call in number. So um, as soon as I get a call in number set up, we'll go ahead um, and, uh, and we'll we'll start. I'll make a community post or whatever. So, yeah, rug rats come first. <laughs> uh, you think daddy would get the big piece of chicken? No, Lukey gets the big piece of chicken. <laughs> there you go, Rachel. There you go. Yep, I'm going to go get him, G Dog. Here I go. think you might want chicken nuggets no what mm. look you want to know what mm-hmm. let me tell you something no guess what? what we're making a video no all of those people seen you acting a fool no say i'm sorry guys no <laughs> mm. Oh, I'm embarrassed because he's not this way. I want to be a good boy. You don't want to be a good boy? No. <laughs> well, let me tell you guys what. Mm. Three days a week, he goes to, to daycare at Miss Chris's. And uh, three days a week, he doesn't get a nap. Mm. So... He comes home and there's usually the switch. Usually the switch on the walk from the daycare to the car. Wrong. He gets flared up. <laughs> uh, and you know what? Every single day these kids they want McDonald's. Hey. You don't want to be a good boy? No. What do you want to be a bad boy? Yeah. Why? You know what happens to bad boys? Mm-hmm. What? Bad guys. Yeah, they turn into bad guys. Yeah. That's right. You want to go into jail? No. No, I don't want you to go into jail. I don't want to turn me a bad guy. That's right. We don't, we don't want. We don't want all the way to be a bad guy. That's right. Give me five, boy. I love you. I do want to be a good boy. Okay, so tell everybody hi, everybody. Hi. Say, how you doing, everybody? Hi, how you doing, everybody? Here, let me show you guys real quick the kind of water we've had. Um, this area right here. Don't, don't show them the water. Uh, boy, don't tell me what to do. This is an, uh, is an athletic field. 
I don't know if you can actually see that water is very deep. And if you look right here, it is just running. Daddy. What boy? Oh, he wants old McDonald's. I want, I want, I want to get a toy. Yeah, yeah. So McDonald's, he's, since day one, he's, he's confused McDonald's with old McDonald's. So every time he wants a Happy Meal, he calls, what do you say? You want old McDonald's? Yeah. Yeah. I want old McDonald's Happy Meal. Yeah, so he has, there's a girl. Um, how old is Melody? Um, three. Three. Her heart rate is like, it's like this heart rate is like me and Maddie and Max. If it does like me too. Well, I thought Max was four. No, Max was three. Max is three, okay. So there's Max and Melanie, they're three. But yeah. Melanie wants to be Luca's best friend. But Luca is very adamant that he doesn't want to have a girl as a best friend. So every day he comes home and he talks about how he had to holler at Melanie. And did you yell at Mom? Did you yell at Melanie today? Yeah. Why? What'd she do? Oh, she just. I think she doesn't want to be his best friend anymore. <laughs> What? <laughs> yeah, I think Melody wants wants Luca to be her boyfriend. Does she want to be your? She she wants you to be her boyfriend. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. If Melody wants you to come to her house, she wants you to be her boyfriend. Yeah, I want to be her boyfriend. Ah, uh, Lukey's got a girlfriend. <laughs> Don't talk about my girlfriend. <laughs> Oh, is it your girlfriend or your friend? Um, my friend. Well, man, why do you always holler at your friend? You come home every day and tell me how you you hollered at Melanie today. Because that my I will I will holler again at my friend. Oh, they're your friends, and you can yell at them if you want to. No. Oh. I want to be best friend with mom. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yes, G Dog. G my friend G Dog. She said girls are smelly. Girls are yucky, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah, man. We just need our friends, right? Yeah. We don't need no girlfriends, right? No. No. I, I, I got, I got girlfriends that like they can. I got one girlfriend. Yeah, don't let him lie to you. He's got girlfriends all over. Everywhere he goes, he makes a girlfriend. So. Oh, 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 oh no. We forgot. Oh, Thank no, you. No. Rachel, it's, you know, what it is, is you just have to work through it. Um, son, listen. Listen. You know, we have to get right back home. It is not quite dinner time. So as soon as it's dinner time, we'll make a decision about what we're going to feed you, okay? No! Well, we can agree to disagree then. Well, this isn't the way to get it, is it? If you act bad, do I go? Do I just rush to get you McDonald's? Yeah. No, I don't. Mm. You need to act right, and then we'll talk about McDonald's, right? Uh, okay. Mm, no. Okay. Fine. Mm. You need split pea soup. No. Okay. Rachel, it's you know, it's child specific too because my other kids, you know, I have to treat him his way. <laughs> So much of, of yeah I'm real good I can handle any youtuber you done No. would you like to have a snack No. what would you like nothing you sure it's nothing no now you want something are you sure? No. Okay. You sure? No. All right, so you're ready to get out? No. 
No. No. Yes. No. No. Yes. No. <laughs> I don't want you now. <laughs> Thank you, Sharon. I'm in the car. Shannon, you're in the bloody car, way. No, I'm not in the bloody car. What happened to your cheek? You're bruised. No. <laughs> Hey, you know what? Um, I have, I, let me give you my philosophy on potty training real quick. Um, no, it, no, it, tell it them is. about the guy my potty training. You want me to tell them about your potty training? No. Can I tell them how we, how we made it work? No. Please? No. I love challenges. I love them. <laughs> no. So what you do is you don't pressure the child into the potty training. No, it, no. It, I'm talking about somebody else, okay? No, you're not. Mm. Okay, you want some fruit snacks? Mm, yeah. <laughs> Let's go get these damn miracle fruit snacks. That's it. So you respect you respect the privacy. Um, number number that's number one. Um, and you respect their time. They'll tell you when they're ready. They'll get tired of peeing in their pants. Now, when you give them that free reign of choice, it makes it a little more difficult because quite naturally you're buying diapers longer. And so the financial obligation, um, it, it's not going in that, in that, in that respect. But this one, he, um, I guess 60 days now he's been potty trained. I put underwear on him one day and about five minutes later he had an accident. I made him stand in it for two or three minutes while I was getting a towel, you know, kind of, there's some, there's some, um, psychology that went into it. Right. Um, but so had him stand in it, had him feel how it goes warm to cold, all that good jazz. And then made a big deal about cleaning the mess up and that, you know, that, that there's germs and we have to do this and we have to do that. And, um, so in 60 days he's had, he had one, one accident the very first day and he had an accident two days ago. Um, he actually went to try to go into the big toilet and it didn't have his ladder up. And so he saw he couldn't do it. And on the way to run to the other toilet with the ladder, he, he didn't make it. Um, so, but other than that, um, you know, and, and just applaud, applaud, applaud. Um, the other thing that, that we did was his grandma, um, she created a treasure chest, she called it. And it was just a tub and she went to a 99 cent store. And every time he made a pee pee or, or a number two in the potty, um, he would get a toy out of, he could pick a toy out of the treasure chest. Um, and we did 30 toys, um, I think roughly, um, of varying, you know, varying types of toys. Um, and by the time we got down to the end, he was, he's potty trained. Um, so, um, it is, and you can't punish them during potty training. Um, yeah, today's kids. You want to go see your mom or what? Uh, no. What are you going to do? I'm, I'm going to sit you in the face. That's it. There could be no punishment in, in the potty training phase whatsoever. It doesn't matter. It, it doesn't matter how. I'll give it to you. Come on. I'll give it to you. It doesn't matter um, how frustrated you are or how angry the situation um, makes you. You cannot show any anger towards them during potty time. Um, that will instill fear. And fear during that time is not what you want. So. Someone. Someone is sleepy. No, no, leave that on there. No. Oh, my goodness. You're tired, aren't you? I love you so much, but go away because you're being a brat. All right, guys. Well, that's it. Um, I'm going to, I got a couple of things to take care of before we do the call in night around 830. I'll make a community post um, nailing down the exact time um, and we'll just do telephone. Um, probably what I'll do actually, instead of, you know, creating a number that people will just, you know, be, it'll be a one time deal if I do it that way. 
Um, I'll create a, a, um, a stream yard and we'll allow people to come up and talk, but um, you've got to uh, show your face. And um, if you won't show your face, I'm not going to let you on. So that's the rules for tonight. Um, I love all of you individually. Remember, the absence of evidence is not the evidence of absence. Any comments, questions, or concerns, leave it in the box below. I love you guys. Yes. Thank you, Shannon. Thank you so much. Love all of you guys. And